Hello everybody, I'm going to do a review on this three and a half cubic foot cement mixer from Arbor Freight. This is item number 67536. This is the larger of the two that they sell. Um, I'd seen another video where somebody was doing assembly on this and you know some of the reviews that I had been reading were the assembly instructions were just garbage, uh, fasteners not fitting switch being broken out of the box mine is not uh, one of the major complaints was the way that they threw this gasket in the box they had it tied in a knot around the belt threw it in the box and then just put the drums and everything on it so they just simply need to lay that in there proper so I think what I'll do here since I don't know if I have sealer you have to provide your own sealer to seal the gasket in between the two drum halves I think once I get it assembled I'll just go ahead and put it together dry snug it up and then let it sit overnight and then I'll take it back apart and seal it uh, or you know if it's that big of a deal I might get at it with a heat gun just kind of flatten it out they've just literally just cranked it crimped it uh, the only damage to mine out of the box that I can see was this bracket right here if you see this little hickey this was actually done before it was put in the box in some way before it was painted there's no way that this could have been damaged sitting down in there like that bending upwards that I was that I could make out so anyway I'm gonna start going through it uh, some of the other complaints that the motors burn out on them I can't say yet this is a third horse probably should be a half horse but if this does ever burn up I'll just go pick up a motor and throw on it but I bought this to do uh, footings for a deck that I'm going to be building at some point in the future uh, as well as like uh, fence post holes I don't like the idea of dry you know pouring dry mix down in there and then just wetting it I'd rather mix it up proper and then put it down in the holes for the posts it's just me and whatever else I can dream up you know that's why I bought this this was $2.99 it was on sale for $209 I had a 25% off coupon, so I got this for $157 and change plus tax out the door. So I'm going to start assembling it. I hadn't even gotten into the manual yet. Big bunch of screws and bolts and whatnot. So I'll kind of describe what I'm doing on the assembly, and then if I run into any issues, I'll show you how I get around them. All right. Well, I started looking through the manual and kind of perusing it on the assembly instructions for this and I see what people are talking about uh, but I'm just gonna make a note here let's just start with step number one it says place the stand which is part number 27 into the triangular bracket 29 so that the bolt holes line up uh, see figure one blah 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 so it shows a diagram here of the stand which is part number 27 and then uh, the other part that they were talking about but then it says, you know, the hex bolts, they're part number 61, flat washer, part number 37, hex flange nut, part number 34. Well, it came with all these bags here that are numbered. Number one is not numbered, but that is the bag for number one. And it goes out to 12 here that are numbered. This one's not numbered, but it's technically 13. They did provide this diagram which shows the bag numbers in relation to where they go on the unit so just by looking at this picture and we're focusing in this area right here we would be using bag number two but if you look at the other side there's also a bag number 12 right here and the bolt goes in a different direction so I can see where people would have difficulty with this so because of that uh, I may actually expand my review on this and the assembly portion of it and tell you exactly which bag I used in which spot and show you where they were. Uh, the other way you could do this is, let's say you needed hex bolt 61, flat washers 37, and hex nut 34. There is a parts diagram or a parts list in the back. Sorry about that, trying to find it. Let's see, let's just pick out the bolts. Uh, there are 61. Uh, 61, I don't think it'll pick up on the camera, but it's an M8 by 65 millimeter, and there should be four. So that will be these ones in bag number two. Those will be 
uh, 60 millimeters long so anyway I think to make things easier and show people how to assemble these because some people are saying it's taking them you know hours or a day to put this thing together and I just can't understand how it would be that difficult but maybe it will be so I'm just going to go ahead like I said and give you tell you exactly what I used where and hopefully I don't make any mistakes and if I do I'll address that and we'll get this thing put together okay well, I've completed the first stepper three they've got a bunch of steps in here that are kind of parroting what they show in the figure before but just to recap uh, the first thing you do is put on this triangular piece this these two bolts here and these two bolts here everything for that came out of bag two so now we're finished with bag two but what they don't show in the instructions but they do here is this bag 12 if you can see it in front of me and those bolts go in right here there's one and then there's one right here they come in from the outside that is bag number 12 just for reference and there's just two bolts two washers two nuts so do yourself a favor uh, don't tighten these two up before you put this one in get all the bolts in there tighten this one first so it'll pull the clamp the bracket in and then tighten up the ones on the outside do the same thing over here that's just the way you should do it tighten up the one in the from the end first get it snug and then wrench these two down so that basically completed down to step five uh, now step six is simply looks like just putting the wheels on it so I'm gonna do that and I'll note that step okay this is step number six I believe installing the wheels uh, the hardware for that was actually in the bag that I called 13 and if you look at this picture 13 pretty much just shows a spring 14 is the hardware for the wheel so this bag is in essence 13 14 and there'll be some other components in here and I'll note those when I get to it but simple you slide a large washer on slide on your wheel I did put a little grease in there another large washer put your cotter pin in the hole bend your tang around there you go do that on both sides quite simple uh, it looks like this will accommodate wider wheels since there's a hole out here where you could put a cotter pin these wheels are pretty narrow they look to be about maybe an inch and a half inch and a quarter inch and a half somewhere around in that area so if you're going to use it out on the, the, the lawn or something you probably want to put some wood or something under there because it may sink down anyway I'm going to move on and I'll note the next step okay well I'm changing up this step or adding my own in actually uh, it says that you know you lower this drum down in here with the, the help of somebody it's not that heavy anyway but the drum's not even attached I think this is an old manual the drums not even attached as it comes so this arm does not have the drum in it so it's not hard to handle but there's absolutely no lubrication in this at all so what I've done is I've just popped the snap ring off of both ends and this is just a cast aluminum fitting here I'm going to apply some grease in here on both ends put those back together then I will install this now there's a hole in here for you know I guess you could just use oil if you just wanted to oil it but if somebody was so inclined and I may do this later uh, grease zerks it'd be nice to have those in there so you could lubricate it from time to time uh, at least in these two points and it looks like maybe in the drum itself I'm not sure how you would get one in there but anyhow I'm gonna lube these up and then I will install this and show you what I do alright well I have the end caps put back on and all lubed up put the snap rings back on works great set it down in here this is bag number three there's just two bolts two washers two nuts stick them in tighten them up done deal uh, I did notice that there's something going on right here see how difficult this is to turn there's I'm assuming a couple bearings in there and I think it's been pressed on too tight so I think what I'm gonna do is take this screw out and hit it with a mallet soft mallet non marring and see if I can free that up a little bit it just almost feels like they've just jammed those bearings in there uh, they didn't even clean the layout die off 
when they uh, cut this key slot here for the pulley thought that was a nice feature still got the blue dye on it <laughs> never seen that before but hey learn something new every day with this stuff so I'm gonna hit this and see if I can free it up a bit it may work itself out on its own but if I can do it now might as well all right well I hit this a bunch with a hammer and it it helped but it's still really stiff it's got a hard spot in it hopefully it's just gonna wear in I'm not gonna bother pressing everything out to see what's wrong with it but that is what it is I'm getting ready to put this control plate on it here now the hardware for this comes out of bag number four but there's two of everything so I have pulled out two bolts two washers two nuts I'll get this mounted up and show you a quick shot okay quick and easy two bolts there you go doesn't matter which way you put this it's the same you know you can put it 180 out but you have to orient it right in you know there's a bell in this a dish make sure you dish it in when you put it on I'm getting ready to install the handle here but I wanted to make note of what bag what bags things came out of what and how this goes together because this part you know might be a little bit tricky for some folks especially with this lacking manual so out of bag number 13 which we deemed 13 slash 14 uh, pull out the spring and out of bag number five all these components came out which is a bolt two washers two nuts and this little disc this disc will go up in this hole here it will be followed by the spring and then you will put this on insert your bolt washers and then then jam these together uh, to where you can still move the handle and then you can set your tension here by adjusting this bolt so let me get this put together and I'll show a shot of that okay I have the arm put together here uh, I'm just going to describe this one more time uh, the flat disc went up in here followed by the spring and then bolt washer washer nut nut and this is a jam nut on the outside they really should have in my opinion you know I like included a nylock on this you know jam nuts work and for those of you that don't know what a, what jamming a nut is uh, you tighten this first nut here up to the point where you take most of the slack out but it still moves freely like so then you would simply take a wrench and hold this nut and take another wrench and tighten this nut jamming these two nuts together you know not everybody knows this this type of stuff so I thought I'd just throw that in there uh, I've not set my tension on this bolt yet until I get everything put together uh, but you can pull it you can see it tip tilting around hit any place you want and there you go I can tell right now it's just too loose but until like I said I have everything put together and get it under its conditions I won't know how tight to do that but I'll adjust that later well I'm on step 16 here where it says to uh, put the gasket in the upper drum to the lower drum but like I said you know the lower drum was not even connected to the support arm out of the box so I'm going to install the lower drum right now and then we'll come back to this step and to do that we're going to be using what I call the bag number one which is just a large bolt a lock washer and another fender washer here and I am going to lubricate that with grease before I put it in like I said because there's no way to uh, lubricate it and then I will show that and then we'll move on to this particular step here I'm going to add in here also that there are two thrust washers right here that were on this shaft as it came out of the box. Uh, just want to make note, you know, to make sure that you get both of these on here before you install it. And then, of course, what we will get next is a bolt, a lock washer, and this flat fender washer, and then tighten that up. All right, the lower drum's now been installed. Two thrust washers, fender washer, lock washer, bolt, tightened it all up. 
it's going to be loud but everything looks good now we're going to go into uh, mounting the upper drum which like I said before I don't have gasket sealer or I haven't looked for it yet but I wanted to flatten that gasket out so I'm going to go ahead and clamp everything together and finish the assembly and then I'll come back and take it apart and seal that later I wanted to make a note here I was coming down on number 15 in their instructions which talks about using the gasket sealer which is not included but I'm going to read this use the gasket sealer not included to stick the rubber gasket to the upper drum making sure the holes in both align the gasket must be flat on the upper drum to ensure a proper seal see figure six then immediately it talks about placing the upper drum onto the lower drum making sure the holes align in both and then inserting the screws and tighten it down then it moves into another step so by my reading on this the gasket sealer is not really being used to seal the two drums together it's being used to hold the gasket in place while you put it together kind of like you would do in an automotive application but if you were going to actually use gasket sealer you would use it on both sides of the gasket and they don't note that here now like I said I was going to put mine together dry to kind of form that gasket but I may run it just like that because I honestly don't think the gasket sealer is required and if it is required you would certainly want it on both sides of the gasket that's just my opinion but now I'm going to go in and show how I'm going to put this gasket on for reference I'm using bag 8 to install the gasket and there are 8 bolts lock washers and nuts in the instruction it states on uh, 17 I didn't really read it to insert the six screws well there's eight in the unit I got so this is evidently an old manual uh, fasten the drums together using plastic washers and hex flange nuts well there's no plastic washers we've got lock washers so what I've done here is laid the top drum into the bottom drum upside down inserted the bolts through the gasket all the way around now I'm going to flip this over and set it on but I wanted to note that somewhere around here there are these two arrows this one's just for rotation I guess but this one that's pointing up there is one on the drum that is also pointing down when you flip this over you want to make sure you get these two arrows lined up and that's that is to uh, allow you to put the paddles in in the proper orientation so I just wanted to note those arrows alright well I have the two drum halves sandwiched together and all tightened up and once I did what I did in the last step I just simply flipped it over aligned the arrows aligned the holes put it down and started tightening tightening things up you know I put the nuts on loosely with my fingers I went around it once just snugging them up and when I got in between two bolts I just kind of pressed the gasket down in there with my fingers to form the circumference and then after I got it around once I went around them again and just tightened them all up in my opinion that gasket sealer is really only used to keep the gasket in place while you're putting these halves together uh, by the way I did it that wasn't even required especially since they said that it, you only put it on one half and if anybody's ever dealt with gaskets you know you don't just put it on one half unless you're just trying to hold the gasket in place which I think that's what they're doing here the gasket itself should do the seal the sealer just kinda holds it in place that's my opinion that's my experience throughout my life uh, so I just put it together dry just like this and I cannot pull in between uh, any of the bolt holes I cannot move that gasket at all so I'm not putting sealer on mine I don't really think it's required okay I'm getting ready to install the paddles and I'm going to be using the hardware from bag 10 and bag 11 bag 10 will be in the bottom of the drum to fasten the paddle and bag 11 will be at the top of the drum to fasten 
the other half of the paddle so since we have those arrows aligned like they're supposed to be I don't believe you can see it but I'll just put a bolt down in there as you can see and then I'll come up and put one right here where I am and I'll tighten those up so like I said bag 10 will be on the bottom there'll be a bolt on each paddle and bag 11 will be up here in the top half of the drum I wanted to make note of the hardware that came out of bag 10 because once I opened it up I noticed that two of these washers were a bit odd uh, we have two bolts two nuts a standard washer and these are like flat aluminum type washers very thin so I just wanted to explain how I'm going to put this together I'm going to start with a bolt here in this and then one of these thin flat aluminum washers which should take the shape of the hole and kind of act as a gasket it will go on here it will go into the drum then I'll get a standard washer and a nut on the back side so I just wanted to know how I was putting that together well the paddles have been installed and tightened up nothing really to note there it worked out great we're getting ready to install the motor hood the motor hood has been installed using the rest of the fasteners from bag number four two bolts two washers two nuts done deal now we're going to install the motor bracket alright the motor bracket has been installed uh, this is using all the fasteners from bag six bolts washers nuts uh, they say to tighten this up but I did not do that yet because that's actually the adjustment for the uh, belt tension uh, there is this bracket right here which is not really referenced in a bag uh, but you'll you'll find it it goes right here nuts washers etc so now we're going to move on to installing the pulleys I believe out of what I called bag 13 slash 14 you'll find this little key in there you need to acquire that I don't believe they make reference on that key at all in here no they sure don't but you'll need that you'll need the pulley of course here's where it's going to go and this uh, screw is in the end of the shaft to hold it on so I'm going to put a few drops of light oil on here just to lubricate this sh so I can put the pulley on line up the key put everything together tighten it up and that should take care of that step now well, that was quite uneventful went on just like it's supposed to so now we're getting ready to get into installing the motor to secure the motor we're using all the contents out of bag number seven which consists of four bolts four washers four nuts now I'm only going to put these in here finger tight because we need to adjust inward and outward to get the belts in line with the pulleys as well as its elevation to set the tension of the belt so I'm going to get those together and then we'll move forward alright the motor has been installed loosely with the bolts and that will allow me to move it inwards and outwards to align these pulleys this is going to be a little bit of a difficult task to get these directly in line with each other because you can't really get in there to see so I'm going to try to peek up from this corner down here from the bottom and get them in line this way then I'll lock the motor down then since I left these bolts back here loose then I'll set the belt tension and to properly tension the belt and it's between this pulley and this pulley you should have about a half inch deflection in here and that should be about right and that's really the standard for anything that's belt driven and it's midpoint between the two pulleys where it leaves one sheave and hits the other a half inch is everything I've always known uh, so I'll, I'll do that and I'll lock everything in obviously we've got some wiring to do here and I don't think that's noted in the manual but we'll get to it 
Okay, well I have the pulleys in line now. I was kind of able to peek up from this corner. I couldn't quite see all of it, but good enough to where I could get the motor in and out, and then I locked it down. Uh, the next thing step would be to uh, set your belt tension, which is why I left those bolts originally loose, even though they said to tighten them up in the manual. Didn't make sense to me. So I've got about a half inch deflection through its midsection, tighten those two bolts down, and I think the last things we have to do now is wire up the motor and put the end cap on and we're getting ready to hear this thing. And one of the last steps in the assembly process it talks about installing this motor cover which has the switch installed in it. Uh, but they don't really talk about the wiring from the motor itself so I'm going to go ahead and go over this. You know you're on your own here I make the disclaimer that you know if you mess it up you own it. But I'll tell you how this works. There are four screws that I took out here. Now we're getting down into this area. And in the bag that we originally labeled 13 slash 14, you have this little fitting right here. Now in the side of this box over here, there's a hole. You can see my finger poking through it. That's where your wires are going to go in from the motor. And to use one of these fittings, you simply place it around the wire and this part will fold in and get pushed right down in there and then you push it down into the hole. That little clip broke there but no big deal. That's how those work. But on the switch itself you'll see we have a, a, a black wire which would be your line in or your hot and then we have a white wire which would be your neutral and a green wire which of course is your ground. Now you can see we have a terminal right here that has a nut on it. That's where the green wire will go. And then on the switch itself, just simply line them up vertically. We're going to put the white wire, the neutral, on this terminal right here. And then we'll put the black wire, or the hot wire, on this terminal right here on the left and then we'll close the box back up and then mount this plate. You know, they don't really show this in the manual, I don't know if I mentioned that. But, uh, you know, it's kind of odd they didn't show those connections. But, that's how they're going to work, that's how we're going to do it, and then we'll mount this cover and I believe we're going to be finished. Okay, the electrical connections have been made. I want to recap this and tell you what I did in addition. Uh, when I went to put the ground lead right here this is not a stud it's actually just a bolt so it was spinning on me so I ended up taking the two screws out of the front which holds the switch they come up here and here and that actually allowed everything to kind of come loose uh, put my fitting in here like I said these are not fun to get in but you can do it you have to squeeze them with pliers and whatnot but you can get them in there so I've got the ground coming in from the motor like I said to right here I've got the hot lead coming in here on the switch and then the neutral coming in on the right so now I'm ready to put my cover back on and then bolt this thing on and then we'll take it for a spin okay the outer motor cover has been put on and I used the rest of the fasteners which were three from bag number nine I had a hundred percent accurate count on the fasteners to put this thing together. I had absolutely no more or no less. Now I had turned it on and it is fairly quiet then it gets loud and growls and kind of shakes. And the reason for that is, is this drum right here is not running totally quite true. So you'll hear it every revolution when I turn it on uh, growl. Now, I'm thinking over time that will wear itself out but it is what it is I can't really tell you how long it took me to put this together because uh, it takes me a long time to shoot these videos you know and stage things out and think about what I'm doing and whatnot but if I had to guess it probably took me about an hour and a half to put this together 
So if you follow my instructions uh, from start to finish, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Of course, I can't make any testament to the longevity of it, uh, this, that, and the other, until I use it. And it may be six months before I use this thing. Uh, I bought it right now because it was on a good sale and I had a 25% off coupon, so I was kind of preparing for the future. So I'm going to turn it on and let you hear it. Here we go. Okay, you heard that growling I was talking about about every half revolution. The other half is quite smooth and and really quiet in my opinion. Uh, so all in all, you know, for the money, which in my case was about I believe $157 and change out the door, it's going to serve my purpose. Thanks for watching and good luck.